You know, thinking is like my favorite thing to do. I could think endlessly. Sometimes I get lost in thought and I ignore everything around me, children, wife, responsibility. But of all the things I like to think about, of all the things and ideas I want to give myself to, of all the wondrous, beautiful things that can occupy my mind, this is my least favorite. <laughs> I don't like to think about money. I don't like to talk about money. According to my mother-in-law, I don't like to make it. <laughs> so when I was asked to talk about money today, I thought, well, this is not what I want to do. This is what I need to do. This is what I have to do. Earlier, Dusty said something about a divine appointment. And I thought, yes. Of all the things I have to talk about today, of all the things that I need to hear, that I think we need to hear and discuss, money seems to be the one burning in me. So as soon as I set out to do some thinking, I sat at my desk, opened up the window, the cat's walking by, I lit a candle, and I wrote down money, is God in action. And immediately, this image comes to me. This image that has stayed with me all week. This image that I can't seem to get rid of. Because I didn't want to talk about the image. Usually, you know, when I think about these ideas, I get a flood of images. They just like pour out. And all I have to do is find the one I want to talk about. What do I want to talk about this week? What's driving me? What's pulling me? What do I need to express? What has to be done? But this week, it was one image. And I waited. I waited and waited and waited for other images to come. Last night at 8 o'clock, I still don't want to talk about this. Last night at 8 o'clock, I'm like, let's start fresh. Blank piece of paper. I'm not even going to use the computer. Maybe the computer's the problem. I'll start with a blank piece of paper. And guess what came out of the paper? The image. This image keeps following me. And it's an image that has to do with money. I used to think that people thought that money could buy happiness. I thought that was the myth that we were being sold by our culture. That money could buy us happiness. And so I thought I had it down pretty well. Because no one actually believes that. No one really believes that money can buy happiness. We're not that gullible. We know that there are more important things to life than this. We know that in our heart of hearts. But then I realized, as I examined this image, that that's not the myth at all. That's not the story that money is telling us. Money's not telling you that it can buy you happiness. It knows you're smarter than that. It's telling you that it can provide a foundation for your life. It's telling you that it can help you meet certain needs and that your entire life can be supported by those needs and that that will make happiness possible. That's the story. The story is all you have to do is make enough and everything else will follow. This was the image. It was a pyramid. And it wasn't just any pyramid. It was a pyramid of needs. Do you have needs? Do yeah. No? Am I the only one? <laughs> you have needs, right? Say it! Yeah. Yes! There you go. You have needs. In fact, you have three types of needs. You have physical needs. The bottom of the pyramid, the base, the foundation. You have a physical body. You have physical needs. This body needs things, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. In the middle of the pyramid, at the heart, at the center, you have emotional 
and mental needs. There are things that your emotions and mental state require for you to live a fulfilled existence. And at the very top of this pyramid, pointing to the tippy, 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 tippy top, you have one spiritual need. And that's the image. That's the model we are being sold. That's the model for the good life. All you have to do is follow this model and it'll lead you right to God. It's beautiful. Let's talk about it. I've been thinking about it all week. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> So at the base of this model, the foundation for your life, the foundation for the good life, are the meeting of your physical needs. You need food. You hungry? Even after Thursday, you're still hungry. You think you'll never be hungry again. <laughs> you go to bed Thursday night saying, I'm not going to do that again. Do what? Eat. <laughs> but you will. It's inevitable. You will be hungry again. Your body requires sustenance. Your body requires food every single day. You need to fill this need. So what do you do? You get a job. You make some money. And you can exchange that money for food. The more you work, the more money you have, the more food you have. And now you can meet this physical need. I go to school. I get a good job, a job that's going to pay me. So I make some money, get some food. Bam! Foundation set. But food's not our only physical need. We have the need for clothing. Not just stylish clothing. Not just cool clothing. Not just fun clothing, warm clothing. You know where we're from? North Carolina? No! <laughs> we're from Africa, where it's hot. <laughs> we developed most of our bodily features in an environment that is hot. That's why we ain't got no fur. <laughs> because we didn't need it at the time, but then we started to develop a thing called culture. I had a cultural anthropology professor who said this. He said, if you think this is where you're from, go out in January. Take off all your clothes. And we all said, what? I'm going to go. Go outside, take off all your clothes, and spend the night. And see if you make it. No, we're not from here. We migrated here. And what helped us do it? Clothes. So that's another physical need. We need clothes. So what do I do? I work. I work, maybe I make a few sacrifices. I get a better job to provide myself with more clothing. Because that's what I do, right? I mean, that's what money is, the great mediator. I invented that. <laughs> Trademark. Money is the great mediator, so I work hard. Maybe I make a few sacrifices and I get a good job so I can provide myself with clothing. But I also need our third physical need in this foundation for the good life. I need shelter. Because the environment's not always kind to me. It rains, it pours, it's cold, it's warm, it's hot. Leaves fall, leaves grow, leaves fall, leaves grow. And we need to shelter ourselves from it. It helps us to survive. So now I need to buy a house. Houses are cheap, right? No. <laughs> so I get a better job. I make a few more sacrifices. I wanted to do this, but you know, that's not really paying. I'm going to study religion in school. And my mom says, yeah, that's a good idea. I study <laughs> philosophy. I'll become a minister because they make the big bucks. No, I'll make a few sacrifices, make some more money, put it in the pile, and I'll get a home. Ooh, foundation of the good life. As long as I have this stuff that money can provide, I can support my entire existence and I can move on to the middle part, my emotional needs, which are based in this model on our physical needs. So what are our emotional needs? What do we need? We need stability. Did you know that we have an emotional drive for stability? We want what we had tomorrow, what we have today, and what we have tomorrow to be consistent, maybe even better. Market research says. <sighs> so what do I do? How do I feel stable? How do I know what I had yesterday, what I have today, I will have tomorrow? Well, I make some more of that money. 
I'll get a better job. I'll make some few more sacrifices. I might not see my family as much, but now I'm going to provide for them because I love them. I want to take care of them. I don't just, I don't want to feel stable. I want to feel stable about everything. I want to exist forever and I want them to exist forever too. I need more of the base, more food, more clothing, more shelter, more money to get more of that stuff. So wait, which was the stuff? The stuff was over here. I need more of this stuff so I feel stable. I need more and more so I make a few more sacrifices. Maybe I get more food. Maybe I buy a refrigerator for the food. I have a pantry full. I have like one of those weird bomb shelters people have. It's all stocked with stuff. Also, I can feel stable so that the food I had yesterday, the food I have today, I will have again tomorrow and all my loved ones will too. Oh, this is great. More job, more money, more stability, better life. But now that I'm feeling stable, I can meet my next emotional need. Happiness. Did you know we all want to be happy? Yes, we do. We all want to be happy. We want to know that life is good. We want to know that life is beneficial. Well, how do we know that life is beneficial? How do we know that life is good? Well, we got the stuff. That's why life is good, because I'm going to be fed. I'm fed yesterday, I'm fed today, I'm fed tomorrow. I have a home, but I want a bigger home. Because if my happiness and my stability is dependent upon the foundation of my physical needs being met, I need to make that foundation bigger. I need a bigger home, more rooms. Maybe I can buy my daughter a home if I make the sacrifices and get that better job. Maybe I can help her to get a good job to get her a bigger home. And doesn't this feel good? Not just warm clothing, cool clothing. Clothing that gives me a sense of identity. Clothing that feeds my top emotional need and that's the need for meaning i want to know that my life means something i want to know that all of this has a point to it but according to this model all i have to do is build the foundation bigger as long as I have more stuff, more food, more clothing, more shelter, more sacrifices to get a better job, to have a bigger home and more clothing, I'll feel stable, I'll be happy, and I'll find some meaning. What's the meaning of it all? To get more stuff! <laughs> so I'm going to go do it. I'm going to make more sacrifices. I'm going to get a promotion. I don't want a promotion, but I'm going to get it. I'm going to get some more money. I'm going to get some more stuff. And somehow, somehow, I'll make it to the top. All the way to the top. Because this model is pointing to the top, right? It's pointing to our spiritual need. It says that as long as I build this foundation, as long as I can make it a few more years to retirement, I can get the stability happiness, meaning, and God. I will make it to God because that's our primary drive. It's for connection. It's to connect with everyone and everything. And all I have to do is contribute my entire existence to building this model. And somehow I will make it to God. No wonder you're all exhausted. <laughs> Woo. No wonder we're all exhausted. Because this is the model we've been following. And it's all based on the foundation of having stuff. And we've made it to God. Yay made it to God. But what is God in this model? In this model, God is money. Because it's not where you're going, it's where you start that defines your life. So if everything is sacrificed for the base, if everything is sacrificed for the foundation, the place you get to is going to be the place you started. And no wonder we worship money. No wonder we worship money. So does the model work? It doesn't? No. Blowing my mind. Does the model work? No! no. <laughs> 
Why do you think everyone's so crazy? <laughs> the reason the model doesn't work is because in this model, each level of your life is dependent on the level beneath it. God is dependent on meaning. Meaning is dependent on happiness. Happiness is dependent on stability. Stability is dependent on how much crap you have. But I am here to tell you a not-so-secret. There is no amount of stuff that's going to fulfill your higher needs. This foundation will never be strong enough to support your entire existence, which is what its job is. You know, the more you give to it, the more it cracks and crumbles. There's a reason we have this stereotype of the midlife crisis. Because you get to midlife and you realize you've served this thing so long <laughs> that you don't really feel stable. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. This thing... It's just a container. It's an expression of a different thing. Why should I spend my entire life serving this, thinking that the rest will just work itself out? So what do we do? I could just leave you here. <laughs> you walk out the door. Wow, that was uplifting. <laughs> Where are you going? To my pointless job. <laughs> to suffer and slave away in my cubicle. Wow. I'm just going to sit here and cry. But no. There's a bright side to it. There's a bright side. The model works. Everything you need is right there. You do have physical needs that need to be met. Surprise. You got to eat. You got to clothe yourself. You need a home to take care of your family. You do have emotional needs that need to be met. You do need stability, happiness, and meaning. And by golly, <laughs> you need a connection to God. It works. It's just backwards. It's just backwards. What if the foundation of your life was the foundation of your life? What if everything began with connection? What if all the sacrifices you made, you made and make for connection? You see, you are a mere expression of the eternal. Not a mere, a magical. You are a miracle of life. You are God pouring itself forth into life. You are grounded in the eternal. That which made the universe, the sun, the stars, the expansion and contraction of all that is, is at the center of your life. Right there, waiting for you to pay attention to it. So what if that was your primary goal? Paul Tillich, German theologian, love him. He said that faith is ultimate concern. What are you ultimately concerned about? And what happens when you plant that seed? What happens when everything begins with God? Well, then meaning stems from your connection. What's the meaning of my life? I I'm an expression of God. That's what my life means. I woke up to meaning. I walk with meaning. I talk with meaning. I think with meaning. I give with meaning. I work with meaning. Because my meaning is derived from something that does not change. Something that was yesterday. Something that was today. Something that is going to be forever. And where do I derive my happiness from? Well, I'm happy Life is not always pleasant. Life is sometimes rough and difficult and I cry and I suffer, but life is good because it's an expression of God.
And everything I experience is an expression of that one thing. And where does my stability come from? The one thing that doesn't change. We want to be grounded in the one thing that doesn't change. What is the one thing that doesn't change? It's God. You are God yesterday. You're God today. You'll be God tomorrow. That will never change past the frailty of your body, past the things that change. This foundation that we're taught to build our life on is constantly changing. But the God principle in you does not. No matter what, ground your stability in that and then give to your work. God. Food, clothing, and shelter. Yes, work for it. Work hard for that. But become God in action. <laughs> you know why money has no meaning? Because money has no meaning. It's hollow. <laughs> it's paper. It's numbers. It has nothing. It's hollow, but we can make it hallowed. We can make money beautiful if we start in a different place. If we start from where we are, if we start from that God principle, then meaning, happiness, stability flow out from us and you take it to your cubicle. God's here. God's on a conference call. God's got a lunch date. God's making some money and that's cool. God has a home. God has clothing. God feeds itself. But it all stems from that place, that connection. And guess how you find it? I can't tell you. <laughs> the bane of the mysterious mysterious what? <laughs> the bane of the ministerial existence is that no one can tell you where to find God because you've already found it. When you walk in nature, when you sing, when you speak, when you hug your loved one, when you gather around the Thanksgiving table, you've already found God in the corners of your life. That has to come first. And you want it to come first, but you sacrifice it because you think the model works. When God comes first, when connection comes first, every part of your life is imbued with that beauty. God is walking, God is talking, God is working. Make that your priority. Start there. You're already there. The foundation of your life is the foundation of your life. The model works. It's just backwards. Begin where you are in those places you find that connection. I didn't really want to talk about this today. I tried so hard all week not to but I had to talk about it. And I thank you for listening. Thank you. Let me tell you where I begin. I do this prayer every day, and I want to do it with you now. I do it every morning I wake up. I do it several times during the day. I do it at the end of the day. So... You can start jamming. That's cool. You can start playing. Yeah, that's cool. I'm just going to talk about this for a while. So I start by looking around myself. And I say, I am here. And I am now. And there's nothing else I need. I say this. I say this is a miracle. Because I get to experience it. Everything I look at. Everything I smell, everything I taste, everything I touch is a miracle because I'm alive to do it. God pouring through me just to touch someone's hand. I start there. Then I take a deep breath. And I say, I'm thankful for my existence. I'm thankful for being alive. I'm thankful for the opportunity to give myself to others, to share what I have, which is you moving through me. Help me to recognize that. Help me to see that. Help me to be that always. And just to give. 
just to serve and just to love. And then I leave my room and I walk downstairs and that walks with me. And maybe I forget in the middle of the day and I come back to this place. I'm here, I am now, life's a gift. And then it walks with me and it walks with me. So I am thankful for our time together, for sacred connections, which are all connections, for time spent, for time given, for time wasted. I'm thankful for all of this and all of you. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.